Thanks, Stephen. Hi, everybody. I'm going to try to keep on time here. It's my pleasure to be here. And I also work with, as you will see, as chairman of the Scientific Advisory Board of Assurex Health in Mason, Ohio. Um, this talk is dedicated to a mentor and a guide for all of us in psychiatric pharmacogenomics, Dr. David Morazic, who sadly passed away this year and who created the field of psychiatric pharmacogenomics and upon uh, much of his work is upon uh, the basis that this talk will be um, addressing. Um, the outline is here. The need for psychiatric pharmacogenomics and understanding how patients and stratification of patients respond uh, to various drugs and medication is now, and the opportunity to do something is now. Uh, we'll give some background uh, to support an applied uh, test called GeneSight RX, which is a, in a family of tests that uh, not only include uh, psychotropics, but can also be applied to uh, ADHD and also analgesia, which are important comorbidities in neuropsychiatry. Uh, we'll look at the results in the field, and then just for a minute, we'll focus on the future, which is wonderful. We have a basis for psychiatric pharmacogenomics, and we're now understanding with the Regulome, a lot of the work is being done here at Stanford University, many good publications right there on the table with Mike Snyder's group. Uh, psychiatric pharmacogenomics is uh, ready to come up next and even improve things more. Um, uh, as was mentioned by Stephen just a minute ago, if you look at all these psychiatric diseases here and add them up, and uh, that should be a plural gill, cancers. And uh, if you take cancer and coronary heart disease, CAD and diabetes, type 1, type 2, look at the prevalence here versus those diseases. At a meeting like this, uh, this is why we're here with this session to open up this new frontier for the field of personalized medicine. Um, you know, from a patient perspective, and uh, frankly from all of us, physicians, patients, caregivers, it's trial and error. You know, we all know about it. Uh, you know, there's, we need a scientific basis, if at all possible, to um, increase the effectiveness of um, dosing and choosing the uh, medi medications of, for various diseases like depression, uh, treatment-resistant depression, ultimately uh, bipolar disorder, and other conditions. Uh, many of you, I think, are um, uh, familiar with the NIMH-funded STAR-D project, which was national, and it simply shows here that every step in the way, uh, when you try a drug, and if it doesn't work, then you try another one, and the effectiveness goes down uh, every time you try it, and the, and the adverse events goes up. And so uh, this is just... Uh, uh, baseline data that was collected across many sites uh, and has been published, and we had a very important site in Ann Arbor with Elizabeth Young working there. Uh, you know, here's um, the patient and the caregiver in the middle and all the various um, factors that uh, relate to psychiatric pharmacogenomics and pharmacogenomics more generally. Uh, ultimately, one would like to stratify various patients in pop in, in, within a population to um, choose the best drug and medication. There's basically um, two kinds of um, uh, uh, physiological uh, determinants. One is the um, pharmacodynamic uh, determinants, and the other ones are pharmacokinetic. Uh, this uh, relates to um, the actions of the brain, receptors, how uh, various drugs can modulate the way the brain works. Uh, here, uh, we look at a family of genes and uh, enzymes called the cytochrome P450s within the liver, but they exist in all tissues in the body. And uh, if we can measure these two things and relate um, the, uh, the genetic and, um, and physiologic effects from the genetic to uh, various um, treatments with various drugs in stratified populations, uh, we can make progress in uh, making uh, uh, assignments of what works best for which patient. Uh, here are a, a set of genes in the pharmacodynamic set here relating to the psychotropics, ADHD, pain. Remember, these are often comorbid. And here, these are examples of the various medications affected uh, by, uh, you know, that are related to these um, genes and uh, receptors. Okay. 
And uh, here's just a simple example, the serotonin transporter here. And what you can see is that there's a phenotypic diversity. Frankly, there's three kinds, high activity, moderate activity, and low activity, uh, relating to uh, various um, uh, variants, uh, either on the single allele or heterozygous, mono, uh, homozygous, or um, heterozygous. And you can tell uh, and make an assignment here measuring the genes and measuring the activities. Um, the cytochrome P450 system is listed here. I think, as you know, there are uh, 50, up to over 57 uh, enzymes that are related in this family, and here's the main family. In psychiatry, the CYP2D6 family is uh, prevalent, most predominant, but all these various cytochrome um, P450s are involved with um, psychiatric pharmacogenomics. Uh, these work primarily in the liver and are related to the levels in the bloodstream. Uh, here's uh, the various uh, a list of some of the uh, P450 um, genes here, uh, including CYP2D6. Uh, and here are some of the medications that are uh, related to these uh, various genes and gene products. Uh, now we'll just have a quick movie here. We'll get through this quick. Uh, just as a level set, I know there are many here who are geneticists, but not everyone, as we learned in the last session. And uh, what I want to do is just relate some of the variants on chromosome 22 of the CYP2D6 series going from the ultra-rapid uh, ultra metabolizer phenotype, where there's duplications, to the extensive metabolizer phenotype. Here, you can see that you have a normal uh, amount of this uh, uh, product. Here, you have an intermediate metabolizer where things are slowing down. You have a deletion in one of the alleles here. And the poor metabolizer. And uh, where and yet these um, different variants can be measured uh, in patients and are measured and are part of the set of measurements that allow us to make assignments of a phenotypic frequency. And you can see the frequency for this uh, particular P450 here. Well, biology is complex. Dr. Hood is here. He taught us a lot about this. And uh, this is just to say that in this case, uh, and tryptoline here, you can see these various uh, variants of the cytochrome P450 series are involved in the metabolism of this drug. And uh, this is, this is a very important uh, for uh, understanding uh, the uh, more subtleties of this effect. And these are all being kept track of uh, at the state of the art within the literature looking at animal and human studies. And are also indicated a lot on the um, uh, FDA uh, labels. Okay, so uh, the point is that there are many genes and combination of genes, both in the pharmacokinetic set, the PKs, and the PD set, uh, related to um, psychotropic activity and major depression disorder, treatment resistant depression. And, uh, you know, with this combination, there's nearly 2,728 resultant phenotype, phenotype Composites. And um, so imagine a pipeline. Such a pipeline was inspired by Dr. Morazic and built by the um, engineering team led by Don Wright and others at AssureX Health. And uh, here you have the PD and PK uh, effects here. And here are these 1,728 composite phenotypes. And then you uh, use um, combinatoric methods and algorithms and relate the psychiatric pharmacology to these phenotypes. And then you can classify on a stratified basis a patient's responsiveness to a, a, given set of mag, uh, a given set of medications. So over here you have the genes, over here you have the patient's responsiveness to the medications. And um, so here's how it goes. You order, a physician or caregiver orders a test with the patient, goes into the laboratory, measurements are made, uh, using the gene chips on a robot. You have these combinatoric algorithms, which are being improved all the time. And then you have a, 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 a easy to read uh, printout, basically, that tells you ones in the green that you can use as a directed. And over here, uh, medications that you should stay away from for this individual, and some in the middle that you could use with caution. And uh, this is very helpful for people, especially who've been taking these. 
Uh, you know, and then you can relate these. To over here, you can see some of these footnotes here that are difficult to read, and the footnotes relate to different um, FDA indications in dosing, et cetera. And so there, I mentioned before, psychotropic deals with the psycho, uh, th those kind of diseases and conditions, ADHD and analgesia. Okay, so now, uh, you, here's, here's the thing, uh, high failure rates. That's, that's the problem that we face. You try, you know, you saw it in the star D, now we're gonna look at it again and see um, four studies that have been done to show the effectiveness of this kind of capability with patients. Uh, two in prospective um, clinical outcomes trials, one in RCT and one in a health economic study. Okay. Um, these uh, kids, uh, C16, HAM, HAMD, and PHQ9 are depression score indicators uh, here. And uh, the important TAW, TAU, excuse me, is treatment as usual. And the key feature here is that uh, the, uh, the uh, effectiveness uh, with the um, uh, pharmacogenomic assay, the gene site test, versus the control gene type test versus the control for all these uh, depression indicators here. The message here is that there is a significant improvement with these p-values uh, in a relatively small n, which is really something that, uh, that these people uh, who are um, guided by the um, pharmacogenomic um, method uh, uh, improve as opposed to baseline. And um, here is the time series showing the improvement in the uh, HAMD score for this particular study over time, which is significant. And uh, here is another smaller study even. Once again, uh, these depression indicators, gene site versus treatment as usual, fourfold greater improvement. It's, it's amazing. Even with these small ends, uh, you know, you see these uh, vast improvements. And, uh, you know, here, this is another relatively small study. The important thing here is this is treatment as usual here, but uh, you can see that um, folks in the red that are under gene site uh, within um, eight weeks have a significant um, positive um, outcome in their HAMD depression score. And so all three of these studies that I just showed you, uh, as indicated here uh, in the meta-analysis, are all indicating uh, favorable outcomes with the gene site test versus the treatment of usual control, okay? Now, in terms of, one, one thing that we've got to look at is the economic burden of these psychiatric diseases. And it's not only in the person who um, misses work, uh, who uh, goes in for more visits, so this costs the healthcare system and the consumers and all of us. Here, it's costing the employment in the family, in here it's disability days claim. In all cases, folks who are in the red condition uh, versus uh, those that are treated with um, the gene site um, pharmacogenomic assay show a significant difference in, uh, in days of work lost, and et cetera. And uh, here it is, uh, non-responders versus responders. Uh, cost is about two and a half times overall two and a half times um, higher direct medical costs and um, approximately six times higher absenteeism. Here's the uh, references here. And uh, so not only are the patients um, getting better faster, even those that don't respond well to the uh, medications, it's not now randomized, it's uh, directed with the um, personalized profile, but uh, it has this uh, economic effect, not only the person, but the family, the medical system, and ultimately society. This is the kind of hope that we have for personalized medicine broadly, and this is the beginning of a revolution in psychiatry, which has gone through various stages where, you know, we lock people up, we put them in straight jackets, we did all kinds of bad things, eventually got medications that um, helped the individuals, but now we can measure, and now we can put them back to work. We can have them uh, be with their families and really uh, have a much better uh, life. Now, just two more things, the future. The future is something called pharmacoepigenomics, which we're working on. Instead of measuring these exon regions, measure these different elements in the uh, regulome, in the chromatin. And here's just a little study that's coming out just here next month, looking at 
uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms and SBs, and looking at the NHGRI catalog, NHGRI GWAS catalog, just in those, um, that should be a less sign. Uh, look at where the SNPs and the SBs that are important, that can add value to what we have already, are in these um, enhancer and promoter and transcription sites and other regions of the genome. And uh, that's the future that we can do. And here's our scientific advisory board. We're um, working on a vision for improving the uh, work of Dr. Morazic in his honor and uh, continuing to develop this test in the field of psychiatric pharmacogenomics. And uh, thank you. And I did my best to stay on time. Thank you very much.